سلام الله الحمد لله رب العالمين صلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد so we have reached uh, in our um, classes to the middle of Surah Al Imran is that I think that's correct inshallah الحمد لله so now we are going to look at the second half of the surah as we mentioned, the first half is uh, addressing the people of the book, the Ahlul Kitab. <clears throat> and the second half is going to now address us, the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And uh, I think it'd be good if we make a, an overview sketch of what's going to come in this surah. Uh, let's open up a blank paper to write some main main things addressed in this section. Mm. Okay, so we will be seeing, inshallah, in this surah, Al Imran, the second half. Focus is uh, to the Muslim Ummah. The main focus here is the Muslim Ummah. We are being told how to become a strong Ummah so that we can be the people who convey the message to become shuhada ala nas, to be witnesses on the Day of Judgment that conveyed the message. So this is one very important uh, aspect of this surah. In fact, the whole uh, aspect of this second half is revolves around this. It then tells us um, what are the characteristics of this ummah. So characteristics of this ummah. And uh, also we learn from the Battle of Uhud in this surah. The Ummah learns lessons on how to become united and stay strong in our vision and our mission. And uh, there is also the element of nifaq, hypocrisy that has been addressed in this because there is, wherever there is iman, there will be nifaq. Wherever there is a true belief, there will also be hypocrisy. And then we will find uh, the Ulul Albab, Ulul Albab. As you mentioned last time, if you remember from your notes, anybody remember anything about Ulul Albab from last lesson? Yes, and it's still bothering me. MashaAllah. I have a question here, if you can answer now. Please. Bismillah. Um, are, are Ulul Albab the people, like I explained last time, the people of intellect? I found another word for it, Jahar. People with the Jahar, Akle Salim. Yeah? Yes, yes, good. We, are these people who are able to understand Mutashabihat? Uh, not necessarily. Not necessary to, to understand the mutashabihat, but they understand that there are things that are mutashabihat in life which we cannot fully understand. I have never met one, have you? Yes, we are all ulul al-bab, alhamdulillah. We all are ulul al-bab. Absolutely. Right. You know, when you were starting, your screen was going up and down. I think I need my brain <laughs> that way as well. Turning around, I do not understand. Maybe I need a, a separate session for it. 
Inshallah, we will look at the Ulul Albab today. And exactly. inshallah, that will become easier for us to understand who are Ulul Albab. And then how to become Ulul Albab, inshallah. Bismillah. Exactly. Okay, so with that, if we keep these uh, things in mind now, yeah, then inshallah, this uh, section will become very simple and straightforward. Bismillah. Bismillah. So let's start to look at some of the ayat of the Ummah. This Ummah, yeah, advice to the Ummah to be organized. So let's look at some ayat regarding this, starting with the beginning of this section. So here we have to realize Allah is talking to the believers who, just a minute, sorry, I have to change the translation to English. Believers who have a clear vision. What is the vision? From Surah Al-Baqarah. The taqwa. Uh, no, the question is, in Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah has given us a vision, yeah? What is the vision? Hmm. So we have to revise previously, yeah? Is it the uh, or somebody uh, Ummatul Basata? Is it? That is coming. Yes, yes, very good. And uh, basically, the lessons learned from the previous nations. Yeah, good. So the middle of Surah Al Baqarah gives us a vision of Shahada Al Nas. Yeah. Yeah. This ayah must be with us every day. We live for this ayah. Huh? This it's, ayah. Also, it's also included in jihad shirk. Yeah, of course, Akhi, jihad is, we're, not forget, we're not forgetting jihad, don't worry. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> Allah Akbar. Even more, even more so now than ever. <laughs> Mashallah. Oh, every time. <laughs> every time it is there, never more or less, every time. Wajahidhum bihi jihadan kabira. Allahu Akbar. Allah Ta'ala is saying to us in this ayah, this ayah should be on our mind all the time. That we are here for one reason, to be the just ummah, balanced ummah. Balanced Ummah is the one that follows Allah and his messenger in every aspect of life. So that we can be a witness that, Ya Allah, we ourselves tried to be that Ummah and we invited others to also be that Ummah. And this is all we lived for. Inshallah. Inshallah. This is the vision. Now this is the middle of the surah, yeah? Middle. The middle of this surah now we are looking at Ali Imran. Middle. 102 middle is relating now to how do we become people who fulfill this vision I as 102 and 103 you see the relationship between the middle of the two surahs now yeah we do yes, yes alhamdulillah <laughs> so this make it easier to remember Allah is saying you want to achieve this vision you have to do three things. Three things. Number one, you have to have taqwa. Number two, you have to hold on fast to Quran revelation. Number three, you have to never ever be divided. Happy? Clear? Yeah. yeah. Taqwa one. Number two, Itisam bihablillah. Hold on fast to the rope of Allah. Number three, wala tafarraku. Do not be divided. Let's look at these ayat now. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Ya ayyuhalladhina amanu. Oh, you who believe. Ittaqullah haqqa tuqatihi. Have the taqwa of Allah as is his right, as much as he has the right to be 
have taqwa for him. Wala tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. And do not die except as Muslim, meaning all your life you have to strive to remain Muslim. In every aspect of life, you have to try to just submit to Allah's guidance because that's the best thing for you. Taqwa. What is taqwa? Let's revise taqwa. What is taqwa, brothers? Mm. So it's uh, uh, awareness of God, God consciousness. Okay, consciousness of God. Anything else? Following his commands and avoiding his prohibitions. Okay, obedience. Follow his commands. Stay away from his prohibitions. Yes, very good. Do you remember the four things we mentioned about taqwa? Anybody remember? Uh, very good. Obedience with uh, love. Say again. Obedience with love. That is a brother, that is ibadah. Yeah, so fear of Allah, act of Allah. upon revelation. Good. <laughs> Al khawfu bil jalil. Fear yeah. of Allah, the magnificent. Al amalu bil tazli, bil tazil. Very, very good. Al amalu bil tanzil. Excellent. Al amal bil tanzil. Act upon uh, act revelations. Revelation. What and is Raza revelation? Uh, Quran. And? And the Sahih Hadith. Very good. MashaAllah. Quran and Sunnah. Okay, number three. Rada bil qalil. Rida bil qalil. Very good. Be happy. Be content. This is the biggest issue of today. Nobody content. Eh? Yeah. One more. I want more. I want more. I want more. Prepare for the day of departure. Yeah, mashallah. Istidabi yomi rahil. Prepare for departure to Allah. Taqwa. Does anybody remember who said this? Ali radiallahu anhu. Ali, Ali radiallahu anhu. He said this to give a nice summary of us, comprehensive. Fear Allah. This is in the heart. Huh? Act, this is the action in the limbs. Contentment again in the heart. Preparation, heart and action. Allahu Akbar. The Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, Sahih Hadith mentioned, he pointed towards shara ila sadrihi. He pointed to his chest and he said, at taqwa ha huna, at taqwa ha huna, at taqwa ha huna. Taqwa is here in the chest. Taqwa is here in the chest. Taqwa is here in the chest. Meaning Taqwa starts with fearing Allah, loving Allah, making Allah the most beloved, being happy with everything Allah has given. Raditu billahi rabban wa bil islami deenan wa bi muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam And then to love to act in guidance because this is just the best for us. And then live to meet Allah in the hereafter. Taqwa, at taqwa, this taqwa. And this is what we have been training for in the whole Ramadan. So the first thing is taqwa. Believers have to have taqwa. Number two, wa'tasimu bi hablillahi jami'an. Wa'tasimu bi hablillahi jami'an. Hold on firmly to Allah's rope <clears throat> that he has extended from the heavens as the hadith mentions one end of it is in Allah's hand the other end is in your hand this is kitabullah jami'an jami'an means hold on to the Quran O ummah together meaning uh, if you have any disagreement you go back to Allah and the messenger you go back to Quran and Sunnah 
you go back to Allah's, Allah's revelation and you will resolve all your disputes. You will not have dispute anymore. And if you obey Allah and the messenger as al Quran and Sunnah, then you will be on the same track. You become united in the heart, in the mind, in the action, in all your activities. And do not be divided. This is command. Amr. Don't you dare be divided. Do not allow division. Do not entertain division because this is going to destroy you and it will therefore destroy the rest of humanity because the people who want to have to convey the message, they are unable to convey the message because they are divided. Therefore, you will destroy yourself and others. Three things we have to appreciate and latch on, latch on to. Sorry, I'm going the wrong way. Astaghfirullah. We have to have taqwa. Hold fast to the Quran. Don't be divided. Holding fast to Quran means we understand the Quran. Bil Quran. We understand Quran. Bil Sunnah. We understand the Quran uh, by the understanding of Sahaba and this understanding of the Tabi'in and the understanding of the Ummah as a whole. And therefore, we have a very clear understanding of Quran. Then. We, don't, we don't have real issue with anything really simple, straightforward. Our main problem is we don't understand Quran holistically. And therefore, we have disputes over minute things, which we don't really understand the overall under picture of. Therefore, we become uh, uh, overindulged in the microscopic elements and we forget the macro picture. The Quran is giving us a macro understanding so that we don't indulge in micro issues. Is there any question about that? And is that clear? Yeah, I think it's clear. Okay. Alhamdulillah. So brothers and sisters, we are all fighting and we are shouting for unity. <clears throat> This is the unity. This is the way to unity as the Prophet united the hearts and the minds of uh, the Ummah. As you can see here, look at this. Allah Ta'ala, he mentions here. وَذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ إِذْ كُنْتُمْ أَعْدَانْ فَأَلَّفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِكُمْ فَأَصْبَحْتُمْ بِنِعْمَتِهِ إِخْوَانًا Allah Ta'ala is saying the biggest blessing of Allah that you should remember and thank Allah for and remain under this ni'mah is Allah, he joined your hearts. He put love in your hearts. Yeah? How? Because of Al-Quran. Because of your taqwa to Allah. Then you knew, you know the Quran. You know it. You become one because you are all saying the one thing. But when you don't know the Quran, you say different things. I think this, I think that, my opinion is this, I feel like this. It becomes a big issue, a eh? big mess. So when we understand the Quran, this is the mission, understand Quran holistically for the Ummah. This is how we will unite people's minds and hearts. And then any dispute would be easily resolved because people would love to go back to the Prophet and before that to the Quran. So now we move on to talk about some of the characteristics of this Ummah. Who is this Ummah? What is this Ummah? So we go to Ayah 104. What is this Ummah going to do? So Allah says, وَلْتَكُمْ مِنْكُمْ أُمَّةٌ يَدْعُونَ إِلَى الْخَيْرِ وَيَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَيَنْحَوْنَ عَلِ الْمُنْكَرِ That from amongst you, meaning you as an ummah, as a whole, this is one meaning, you as an ummah, as a whole, you have to collectively invite people to khair 
all good that will be of good for them for this life and the hereafter. And you will tell them what's best for them, what is ma'roof. Ma'roof is that which your instinct, your fitra knows is good and the sharia says good as well. And munkar, yanhauna anil munkar, munkar is what your fitra knows is bad and sharia says is bad. You will tell them what's bad for them. These are the people who have striven hard, worked hard, and then attained success in the hereafter. So one meaning of ummatun is you as an ummah, together you have to do this. The other meaning is that you as an ummah, from amongst the whole ummah, there must be people who are specializing in this trying to bring all the ummah back to this as well and inviting the other people to this as well. So essentially, nobody is exempt from this. Some people, they say, oh, this is just for some people who should be doing it. No, this is not the correct understanding. This is a, a means of escapism. The responsibility lies on all of us, but the responsibility will depend on the person's ability. So this is what we will, these are the characteristics of this ummah to say what's right and what is wrong. And then Allah again, he warns us, Don't be like the previous nations, the Bani Israel and the Nasara, who after the clear verses, the clear ayat, they came to them, Still they differed and still they disputed and they divided from each other. They're happy with whatever they have. They don't want to know what other people are doing. They become divided into sects. Don't be like that. So this is another characteristic of the people of this ummah. Another one. We take um, ayah number 110. Kuntum khaira ummatin. You are the best nation. But when are you the best nation? And what for you have been created? Ukhrijat linnas. Ukhrijat linnas. Your whole purpose of your creation and your... Just one minute. Sorry, I have to open the door. You have been created for mankind. Your whole production, you know, you design a product. You design a product for a purpose. You design a phone for a purpose. You design a, a pen for a purpose. You design a car for a purpose. Airplane for a purpose. Allah Ta'ala, he says, he has created you, Ummah. For a purpose. This is your purpose. Otherwise, you are redundant. You are not of use. You are there for mankind. What we should do for mankind, ta'muruna bil ma'roof. You must enjoin what is right. You must tell people this is right. But tanhauna anil munkar, you must tell people what's bad for them. Because you care for them. But tu'minuna billah, and you believe in Allah. And from amongst this mankind, one of your primary and biggest audience must be those people who are mentioned in the next part of this ayah. Only if the people of the book believed that would have been better for them, Minhumul mu'minun, there are from amongst them those who will believe eventually because they have the potential and they have the ikhlas. But wa'aktharuhumul fasiqun, but the majority of them you will find when you invite them, their love of this dunya has encouraged them to follow their desire, which leads to fisk, which leads to disobeying Allah. For example, they cannot leave haram. They cannot leave alcohol. They cannot leave haram food. They cannot leave haram lifestyle. They cannot leave haram income. They have to drink, gamble, and uh, 
they have to be in their uh, relationships. They do all haram. So they have become accustomed to this, this fisk, life of disobedience of Allah. Therefore, they find it very difficult to turn back. And you know this as people of Dawah, majority of people who even they are convinced of Islam, they say, how can I be Muslim? I can't stop this, I can't stop that, I can't do this, I can't do that. Hmm. So one of our biggest audiences of Tawa has to be people of the book who are the majority of the people on this earth. So this is a, a characteristic of the Ummah to give the Dawah in the, uh, very clearly Allah has given here to us. Uh, Brother Mas'ud, uh... So this verse, وَتُؤْمِنُونَ uh, بِاللَّهِ came after تَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَتَنْهَوَنَا الْمُنْكَرِ Although in, 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 the, in the siyaq of the, of the verse, وَتُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ It means that both كُنْتُمْ خَيْرَ أُمَّةٍ أُخْرِجَتِ الْنَاسِ تُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَتَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ So it's all mm. at, at, the same, at the same level actually. Babe. But always, if there is this style, then there is emphasis here. Huh? There is emphasis here. Yeah, it because is. It is. It is part of the obviously of the uh, Quranic balagha. Absolutely, to say that you, your, your main, your main thrust. Where are you coming from? Where are you going? What are you doing this for? This is tu'minuna billah. This is all based on iman billah. Of course, yeah. This is not based on just we want to help people because we just care for their livelihood. Eh? No, you believe in Allah. This is the reason why you do your everything. Yeah, many, of course, people, yeah. many people may do many things for people's benefit, but it's not for Allah. It is not believing in Allah. No, the, the belief uh, requires action. Uh, Absolutely. Always. Absolutely. So emphasis here is Iman is the uh, the niyyah, the niyyah in the malamalu bin niyyah. You have to keep it clear that you are believers in Allah. That's why you're doing all this. Allahu Akbar. Uh, Sheikh. Yes, brother. This small number of believers that Allah is uh, speaking of about the desire. Are they still minority of believers? Do they still exist today? Ah, <laughs> Allah, okay, you are a difficult question. Eh? <laughs> I mean, how can we, I mean, to be honest, generally, generally, if we take this as general, of course, of course, that there will always be from the people of the book. Yeah. And this is your experience when you give da'wah, you ask uh, our brother, Dr. Usama, he will tell you that when you give da'wah, especially the Christians, you will find there are people who are sincere to Allah. They are sincere. And they, they are the people who can be become believers. But a lot of people, the majority of people who say they are believing in Allah, from the people of the book, they say we believe in God. But their lifestyle has been now fashioned into disobedience of God because, you know, I mean, this is a long discussion, but because the Christian scriptures and the, this Paul, Paulism really, he absolutely abolished all Sharia. It just now is boiled down to you just have one dogmatic belief that Jesus died for you and that's enough and everything else is up to you in your life. There's no halal, there's no haram, there's up to you, whatever you do. Eh? So therefore, the people became used to just following desires, even with a belief that there is God. So, Allahu Alam, it seems like that is in the experience as well. Sheikh, my, my own personal experience of communicating with the people of the book is that actually, that was is more difficult when yes. dealing with them than those who are atheists. Yes. Because with the, with the atheists, 50% of the job is done. Yes. Say. Because they believe, they don't believe in any God. That's right. It is the first, first part of Kalima. The uh -huh. next part now is actually getting them to understand the true concept of Allah. Right. Whereas with the non-believers, we have to program them to believe that Jesus is not God and is not son of God. Yes. And I haven't come across a single Christian in nearly 30, 35 years, for instance, 
I have mm. the opportunity of uh, conveying messages in my own, you know, understanding. Mm. Sure. Really want to stomach that. Yes. You may you either say Jesus is not God, and you even give references in the Bible, yeah. where yeah. Jesus denied at the the the, the, the midnight trial in front of Pontius Pilate. He denied being son of God three times. Mm. Mm. And they immediately went after that to say, son of man. They still mm. won't accept that. Yes, you're right. You're right. It's, 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 anyone it's, who wants to share partner with Allah cannot be a believer. Same, same. So that, is, that's, that's the context of my, uh, what I'm thinking, that's why I asked that question. You're right, you're right. It is difficult because they have already got something that they think this is it. And they are completely attached to it. That's why Quran, uh, Surah Ali Imran, this Surah, and then Surah uh, Maryam, you will find that Allah, he starts the, this discussion from something very simple, easy, common sense, Zakaria, Yahya, Hana, Maryam, then Isa, salam, then etc. So slowly, slowly, slowly to get, because they are very touched, you see, it takes time for people to realize this. But you're correct, yes, it's difficult. Is that correct? Okay, we move on. Brother Masood, yes. just uh, yes. to say that da'wah yes. is not only for Ahlul Kitab, it's for Muslims as well, for your yes. family, for Absolutely. yourself, everybody. It is shamila. It is, uh, Absolutely. Have, this is Ummah. I have to uh, do da'wah for myself every day. Absolutely. I have to. I have to push myself to go for Fajr Salat. I have to push Absolutely. myself to do all the uh, dhikr and everything. So it is start with oneself every day and then your family, then your brother Muslims in your community. And uh, it progresses like that, really. Sahih, Sahih. Ku anfusakum wa ahlikum nara. Anzir ashidatakal akrabin. Jazakallah khair. You're right, absolutely. In fact, the beauty of our deen is if we look at the Sunnah of Rasulullah, from the beginning, he was learning the revelation and inviting to it. This is how we should be. As we are learning, we are inviting. As we are learning, we are inviting. As we are learning, we are inviting. There's never a time, never a place where you say, I know everything. Then I can start. No, because you never know everything. As you learn, you invite Balligu Anni Walla Ayah. Even if one ayah you understand it as Muhammad explained it as it should be understood, then you convey that as much as you can. Inshallah. Okay, some other characteristics of these this Ummah. Yeah. We are on the same Ummah uh, topic. Let's have a look at some characteristics of this Ummah what it will strive to do from 130 to 136. So first thing is you have to try your best to be interest free. And then obey Allah and the messenger. Number three, sariu ila maghfira min rabbikum. Try to be muttaqeen and the aspect of taqwa here, you try to run towards Allah Ta'ala's forgiveness and his mercy by doing good, by doing what he has said, by doing what he has told you, etc. etc. Sorry, just one minute, I'm opening the door again. Just one second, sorry, I can start. Just one second, brother, I'm going to have to just mute you for just. 10 seconds. Okay, Bismillah. So, uh, where are we? Huh. So, characteristics of the believers we're looking at of the Ummah and infaq. Alladina yunfiquna, people who do infaq, fissarra. In ease when it's easy, but the ra and when it's hard, well, and the people who can control their anger, huh? anger management, 
الناس, and they forgive people. These are the characteristics of Muhsinin. وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا فَعْلُوا فَاحِشَةً أَوْ ظَلَمُوا أَنْفُسَهُمْ فَذَكَرُوا اللَّهَ فَاسْتَغْفَرُوا لِذُنُوبِهِمْ وَيَغْفِرُوا الذُّنُوبَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ وَلَمْ يُسِرُّوا عَلَى مَا فَعْلُوا وَهُمْ يَعْلَمُونَ When they make any mistake, small, big, indecent, any, they make a mistake, they do a sin, they do disobedience, they turn to Allah, they ask Allah's forgiveness, and they do not remain steadfast and persistent in Allah's disobedience. They always turn back to Allah. أُولَٰئِكَ جَزَاؤُهُمْ مَغْفِرَةٌ مِّنْ رَبِّهِمْ مَجَّنَّاتٌ تَجْرِ مِنْ تَحْتِ الْأَنْهَارُ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا وَنِعْمَ عَجْرُ الْعَامِلِينَ These people will be given the reward of Allah's mercy and forgiveness and Jannah under which the rivers flow to live forever. This is the best reward for the people who work. So more characteristics given of this Ummah, yeah? the people who want to do this job, then have these characteristics and keep trying to have these characteristics to be successful in your mission. Brother Masood, just about Maghfiratullah. Allah um, has, uh, uh, the, you know, full Maghfirah. It is like a glad tiding to all of us, really, because we all do sins and we have, and, and in many times of the Quran, um, there is mention about uh, Allah khayr al ghafirin for example, and Allah yaghfir al and Sorry. the shaitan want hmm. us to, when we do a sin, to be sad about it and not ask for Allah forgiveness. Hmm. Yeah. So, so Maghfiratullah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a great blessing for us as Muslims. Absolutely. And we, we understand it really and to repent to Allah several times. The Prophet ﷺ used to repent <laughs> 70 <laughs> times in a one sitting. <laughs> this is a very positive strength for us, Maghfirah and Tawbah. It strengthens us. It gives us, it gives us eternal hope, never-ending hope. SubhanAllah. Subhanallah. Yeah? The people who do Tawbah, Look at the people who, do, who are tawwab and awwab in the, uh, we will mention inshallah in this fifth group of, of uh, Tawheed, the prophet messengers who kept on doing tawbah, who kept on turning to Allah. They were the people whom until the last day in the Quran Allah has mentioned them because they were committed to Allah, committed to the cause. They kept on, they didn't give up. So this is yes. a very positive strength for us. That no al Absolutely. No al abd inna hu awwab. Absolutely, absolutely. So the best people who turn back to Allah, make a mistake, turn back, turn back, turn back, turn back. Alhamdulillah, this is a blessing that Allah has given us. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. And then one aspect of uh, this ummah, uh, in fact, let's go to, uh, let's go to, uh, let's go to the case study of Battle of Uhud now, yeah? So let's see where we are. We've looked at some of the characteristics, yeah, of the Ummah. We're going to now look at Uhud in this light, briefly. As you know, Battle of Uhud took place in the um, third year of Hijri. Okay, after Badr, one year after Badr, yeah? So I'm just bringing up the uh, timeline so that it can be easier, inshallah, to understand. And we know that uh, the... Prophet alayhi salatu salam, he left for Uhud, yes, with the, a thousand, a thousand believers, but Abdullah ibn Ubay ibn Surul, he left, he left the battlefield, he left the army with 300 munafiqeen to abandon the believers at this time of need, and then it was left to 700 believers after that, and they, this was basically uh, the, uh, the Quraysh wanted to now show their might after they had been beaten in Badr. So Allah Ta'ala caused this to again, this battle, this Ghazwa to take place. And the Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasalam, he had uh, stationed some archers, approximately 50 of them, at a hillock, a small hill of Ramat in the 
uh, in Ahad so that uh, nobody could attack the believers from behind them. And then the battle grew fur furious and the believers by the will of Allah, bismillah, permission and his uh, help, they were attacking furiously and defeating the Quraysh and the Quraysh, they ran, they ran away from the battle, defeated. And when the archers on the hill saw this, they thought that the battle was over and they made a mistake of ijtihad. They made a mistake, which was not because of their sincerity, no, because of a human judgment error. They disputed between themselves as to whether they should remain or they should leave the hill majority of them understood that now the battle is over, so we don't need to remain here. So they came down from the hill, but uh, Khalid ibn Walid, who was not Muslim yet, he then, because he was watching this uh, very closely, he then attacked from behind with his, uh, uh, with his um, uh, horse, horseback army, and they crushed the believers and the Quraysh. When they saw this, they turned back. So the believers were squashed in the middle, sandwiched, and therefore they had to retreat up to the Mount of Ahud to save themselves from this. It was a very, very difficult time. Many Sahaba, 70 of them were shaheed because of this mishap that happened. Even the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi was uh, uh, injured, very badly injured, he uh, even fell unconscious. Even the rumor was spread that he وسلم, had been killed in this. So this became a very, very difficult test and a time for the believers. But Allah Ta'ala through this, he teaches us that you have to always remain obedient to your leader and never dispute in the matters because this leads to destruction for the whole ummah where even a battle you have, a, you have won, it, you could lose it because of this. So learn a lesson uh, for, from this. So let's take some ayat that shed some light on this, inshallah, from the surah. <coughs> let's take from 140. Allah mentions here, in Yamsas, if you have been wounded, then the enemy has also been wounded. And this is Allah's Sunnah. Sometimes you will win, sometimes the enemy will win. And this is all there's a hikmah. This is to sift the true believers from the disbelievers or the munafiqeen and to give certain people the higher rank of shahada and more through the trials and this will eventually lead to the destruction because of the disbelievers because the believers would become more and more stronger in their pursuit of Allah Ta'ala's pleasure. And then we move on a bit more, a few more ayat about this. <clears throat> 152 and 153. So Allah fulfilled his promise when you were killing the enemies by Allah's will. Hatta until idha fashiltum. Until you lost the courage. And you disputed. Yeah, regarding coming down from the hill. وَعَصَيْتُمْ And you, without realizing, you didn't do it because you meant to, but this led to you disobeying the Prophet ﷺ not to leave that place. Allah Ta'ala, he then showed you because you saw what you love, which means you love the victory for Allah. You saw that you came down from the hillock. But then Allah Ta'ala, he says, he has uh, tested you through this and he has forgiven you. So the people of Ahad, they are forgiven for their mistake. And then Allah mentions again, when you were climbing up the mountain, hmm? 
Allah Ta'ala's Rasul was calling you towards himself to protect you. فَأَثَابَكُمْ غَمَّمْ بِغَمِّنْ Allah Ta'ala gave you one difficulty after another. لِكَيْ لَا تَحْزَنُوا عَلَى مَا فَاتَكُمْ وَلَا مَا أَصَابَكُمْ So that you would not grieve for that which had escaped you, meaning the victory and what had happened to you. So you would become strong, you'd become tough, and you would know that we didn't come to the battlefield except for just one reason, which is لِكَلِمَةِ al to make Allah Ta'ala's word <clears throat> the supreme. We are not here for the dunya. Allah knows exactly the intentions behind what you are doing. <clears throat> and there's a lot of ayat. I'm not going to go through them because of, of course, uh, needs time. But then Allah Ta'ala is saying uh, near the end of this, you could say that look at the leadership style of the Prophet والسلام, in all this difficult time. The leadership has to have this uh, response. فَبِرَحْمَةٍ مِّنْ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ By Allah's mercy, you are lenient. Linta, linta, in English also lenient. وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضْنْ غَلِذَ الْقَلْبِ If you are very hard-hearted and rude, لَنْ فَضْدُ مِنْ حَوْلِكَ They would have left you. فَعْفُ عَنْهُمْ So you should forgive them and you should overlook their mistakes. وَاسْتَغْفِرْ لَهُمْ Ask Allah to forgive them. وَشَّاوِرْهُمْ فِي الْعَمْرِ And Consult them in the important matters. But when you have taken their consultation and you have made a decision, then you rely on Allah once you make your decision. Allah loves the people who once they have made the consultation, they've looked at the facts on the ground and they have got the best consultation and then they make a decision based on shura, then they rely on Allah. Allah, he loves this. So these are some things about the battle of Ahad that Allah so, mentioned. So brother, brother Mas'ud, again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here uh, show his maghfirah for, for the sahaba who disobeyed the Prophet alayhi salatu Absolutely, absolutely. absolutely. Uh, when he says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ تَوَلَّوْا مِنْكُمْ يَوْمَ الْتَقَى الْجَمْعَانِ إِنَّمَا اسْتَزَلَّهُمُ الشَّيْطَانُ بِبَعْضِ مَا كَسَبُوا وَلَقَدْ عَفَى اللَّهُ عَنْهُمْ عَفَى اللَّهُ حَلِيمٌ so, Subhanallah, no, shaitan, he is, he was there obviously, they, they, they are human beings and they've Absolutely. seen, they've seen the, the ghanaim and the, you know, the, uh, the spoils of war and, uh, and, and obviously the shaitan was there as well, uh, yeah. but uh, uh, Subhanallah, Allah غَفُورٌ حَلِيمٌ that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always gives maghfira to the believers uh, after they repent, obviously. So they, they, uh, and it's always about maghfirah. Their intention was always good. And look, they have become a, an example for the whole ummah now. Look at this. Allah has given them this status. Eh? Subhanallah. Yes, al alhamdulillah. Uh, th this is just uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, how uh, he um, made this ummah or, or the, the, our, our, our predecessors, the Sahaba, um, he uh, obviously يمحص. so he, he made yes. them the best of Ummah obviously Allah. Allah. Uh, and Tarbiyatullah subhanahu wa ta'ala absolutely this is Allah's blessing for all the whole Ummah that's why we are joined with them yeah? we are all joined together Alhamdulillah because of this inshallah and then Allah mentions uh, because this was a test for the belief and many of them they left as we mentioned with the Abdullah ibn Ubay so they are the people of Nifaq. Allah has mentioned here. Allah Ta'ala, he does this. He makes these difficulties. Eh? On the day when you met, Allah Ta'ala, he made this difficulty so that he knows the believers and he knows the munafiqeen. They made excuses that, no, if we knew that there would be a fight, we would come. They didn't come because they knew they wouldn't fight. They're making excuses. That day they were closer to kufr than the iman that they claimed to be. They said with their mouth that which was not in their heart. And Allah Ta'ala, He knows what they're hiding. And they said to the believers, لِإِخْوَانِهِمْ 
those who said about their brothers while sitting at home, so they didn't go, if they had obeyed us, meaning if they hadn't gone to the battle, then they would have not been killed. So Allah Ta'ala is saying to them, Qul, Will you be able to prevent death from yourselves? Eh? If you are true to what you're saying? No, you will never be able to. But they have been given the status of shuhada, which you have not been given. Allah Ta'ala is saying about these believers who died in, who were shuhada in Ahud. Don't think they are dead. They are alive with Allah. Allah is providing for them which you cannot imagine. And they are happy. They are so happy with what Allah has given from His bounty. And they are giving glad tidings to those who have not yet joined them that they will have no fear, have no regrets. If you follow this path, you will be happy forever. And uh, regarding the munafiqeen, Allah Ta'ala has mentioned very, very dangerous ayah regarding the munafiqeen. Hmm. Where is it? This one. Don't think people who think that, oh, if I'm stingy, I don't go to fight in the way of Allah. I don't give my money in the way of Allah. Don't think this is good for you. This is uh, bad for you. So you ma bakhilu bihi yom al -qiyama. This would be encircled in your neck on the day of judgment because you should know if you have true belief, you will know that everything belongs to Allah in the heaven and the earth. Everything is Allah's. Nothing is yours. And Allah Ta'ala, he knows what you are doing. And then we want to look at in the time we have left, who are the Ulul Albab? Okay. So this Ummah is made of Ulul Albab. Who are Ulul Albab? Let's look at this. In the creation of the heavens and the earth. And the day and the night they come and they go in this there are signs for Ulul Albab. Who are Ulul Albab? al So now Allah Ta'ala is telling us who are the Ulul Albab. They are the people who Yadhkurun Allah. They remember Allah. Qiyaman, standing. Qudan, while they are sitting. Wa ala junubihim, and even when they are lying on their sides. This can mean a few things. Most obvious thing is in their salah. They stand. They sit, and even when they are resting, they remember Allah. The other thing is, in their in their life, when they are strong, qiyaman in the in the young life, and when they become weak, uudan. But even then, they remember Allah, and even when they become really old and weak on their sides, lying down, even then they are remembering Allah. So all their life is for the remembrance of Allah. A third understanding is. Whenever they are working, whenever they are working hard in every aspect of their life in the day, day and night they're working, and even when they rest, they are remembering Allah. Meaning the whole life is in the remembrance of Allah. And they think about the heavens and the earth and the creation and this universe. And they always remember, Rabbana ma hadha batila. You did not create this without reason. This is not without purpose, this creation. Subhanak. So therefore, we all Allah, how can we say that we are without purpose? You are perfect. How would you create us without purpose? Fakina adha So Allah, we understand our purpose is to be tested. So therefore, give us success by saving us from the Jahannam. And they ask Allah Ta'ala to protect us from entering the Jannam. And they ask Allah, Rabbana inna sami'na munadi yunadi lil iman and amin rabbikum fa'amalna. They say, oh Allah, we heard the Prophet Sallallahu inviting to iman, we believed. So therefore Allah, forgive us, faghfir lana dunubana, our shortcomings, wa kaffir anna sayyatina, cover our bad deeds, wa tawaffana ma'ala give us death with the righteous, 
Rabbana wa wa'atina wa wa'atina ala rusulik. Oh Allah, give us what you promised us through the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Please, Allah, save us from humiliation on the Day of Judgment. You fulfill your promises. And then immediately to the Ulal Al-Bab, Allah Ta'ala responds. Allah responds by saying, whatever good you do, I will not let it be wasted because you did it with Iman, whether you are male or female makes no difference to Allah. He looks at the ikhlas in the heart and the amal, which is according to Allah's Sharia. So therefore, what you should now do, O Ulul Bab, Ulul Al Bab, do Hijra. Hijra is to leave the thing of displeasuring Allah to the thing that pleases Allah. Wa ukhriju min diyarihim ma'udhu fi sabili, the people who even were expelled from their homes and they go through hardships to remain loyal to Allah. وَقَاتِلُوا وَقُتِلُوا They killed and were killed. لَا أُكَفِّرَنَّ عَنْهُمْ سَيَّعَاتِهِمْ Allah Ta'ala promises that He will definitely cover up all their bad deeds and He will وَلَا أُدْخِلَنَّهُمْ He will definitely enter them into the gardens under which rivers flow. This is the reward from Allah exclusively and with Allah is the best reward. So these are the people who are ulul al-bab. May Allah make us from the people who have these characteristics. If we have these characteristics as much as we can throughout our life, we strive, then inshallah, we are ulul al-bab. And then the last ayah of the surah, Allah Ta'ala summarizes the whole surah. O oh, believers, ya alladhina amanu iswiru. Remain steadfast. Wa sabiru. Sabiru can mean remain steadfast and teach each other to remain steadfast. And the other meaning can be be more steadfast and determined than your enemy. Warabitu. Rabitu means you should be well organized together and you should protect each other and your borders. Wattaqullah. And the essence is taqwa. La'allakum tuflihun. So that you would be successful in this life in conveying the message and establishing Allah's oneness and in the hereafter for the rest of the eternity you would be blessed by Allah. Allahumma rabba jalla minhum. Jazakumullah khair. We have a few minutes if you want to ask or add anything. <coughs> this last ayat, Ispiru wa Sabiru. What's the yes. difference between Ispiru and Sabiru? Yes. So Ispiru, Ispiru as I said, Allah Ta'ala is saying to us, remain steadfast yourself. Okay. okay. Sabiru, Sabiru means that you have to tell each other to remain steadfast. Right. Okay. Okay. And it means be more steadfast than the enemy. This is Mufa'ala. This is a, a, um, uh, yani, a competition, if you like. Okay. Okay. <laughs> And yeah, my question was uh, maybe not linked with uh, today's session. But there is something going on which uh, I wanted to ask you. Uh, Adam al Islam, some people say, was sent down to earth to to uh, to uh, to uh, to do the the saza, you know the, the the and some people say Adam al Islam was forgiven it before he was sent down to earth because mm -hmm. this decision was already taken to send Adam al Islam to earth. It's mm -hmm. going on the social media, so I thought I better ask. Okay, very simple, very simple. Allah Taala. Allah Ta'ala, He forgave them. Okay, they made a mistake in the Jannah. They mistaken, they made a mistake, Allah forgave them. Allah, finish. Allah, had said, Allah created, He said in the beginning of Surah Al-Baqarah, this is the problem, we don't read Quran, you see. Beginning of Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah Ta'ala mentions to the angels, I'm going to make a Khalifa fil Ard. I'm making Adam for the earth. You see? Adam was created to be sent to earth. He wasn't sent to earth because he got punished. He was going to come to earth anyway. So it's very simple. Alhamdulillah. Allah wa 
Some people are good. Yeah. Jazakallah. Can I go and share? Bismillah. Yeah, could you assist with uh, Ayah 3118? Sorry, In which one? order, Ayah as well. Well, of course, uh, we are want to not to take uh, um, Nazara, the Yahudis, as uh, confidence. Oh, yeah, which, which, which Ayah? Ayah 3118. 118. 118, yeah. Mm. Mm. So my, my question there is that uh, there are some instances from personal experience mm. whereby circumstances brought me uh, in close working relationship with Muslim and non-Muslims. Mm. But it turned out the non-Muslims are more uh, reliable, trustworthy than Muslims. Mm. And I've wrestled with these uh, ayahs and some other ayahs as well, mm. you know, in terms of how do I respond? How do I... Mm. How do I handle this matter? Very easy, Akhi. Very that, simple. That's always giving me some dilemma. Akhi, look here. No dilemma. Alhamdulillah. Quran makes everything clear. Yeah. Allah Taala says, "La tatakhidu bitana tan bitana bitana." What is bitana? This is the crux of this. Bitana means the people who care for your hereafter. Bitana. The people who really care for you inside, who care for your hereafter. So now you have to ask yourself, who are your real friends? Your real friend is the person who you say that uh, I want to uh, obey God and I want to just obey him. And I don't want to obey my desire, but I feel like doing this. But God says this, so what should I do? So if your friend is your friend, he will say, obey Allah, don't obey your desire. But who is not your friend, he will say, well, don't worry about God. You should uh, not suffer like this. You should obey what you want to do. And straight away, you will know who's your friend. So these people who you might think they, are, they do care for you because of this, the care and trustworthiness will come when it comes to the matters of the hereafter. This is the real friendship, okay. I'm not, yeah, thank you for that, Sheikh. But also, mm -hmm. Allah wants, so if when you give me a measure, you give full measure. So, if a non Muslim is telling you, is basing his character, the way he behaves on that part, but a Muslim is going in a way that contradicts Allah's kalam, Allah's kalam. Mm. How, 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 how do you reconcile that? Yeah, because they are acting, they, see their action is fine, good, they're doing a good action, that's good. But Allah Ta'ala is saying, if you want to befriend somebody, befriend the people who will help you in the hereafter, to get to the hereafter. They are your true helpers. You see, Allah Ta'ala mentions in Quran, I remember, I forget the ayah, Al-Ikhilla, uh, what is the ayah? Everybody on the day of judgment, even your brother, even your brother, blood brother, unless he is muttaqi, Muslim, wanting your hereafter, even that day you will be enemies of each other. You won't want to know each other. Yeah. So your true friendship, true love and friendship is with people who are going to help you go to Jannah. This is the bottom line. This doesn't mean that you don't like them. You, 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 we, love the, we love every human being. We want them to go to Jannah, isn't it? This is the whole Quran is saying. This is the whole purpose we have been created. We are designed is for humanity's betterment, for their best interest. So of course we have love. The Prophet loved everybody so much. Allah says to him, You're going to kill yourself. You care for them so much. You're going to kill yourself. Why? Because he heard where they're hereafter. So uh, there's no issue with that. We have to, as Brother mentioned earlier, we have to work on all fronts. We have to invite the believers back to their Islam, and we have to believe, uh, invite the non-believers to Islam as well. Uh, Wallahu alam. There was uh, also a mention of jihad, isn't it, in this um, um, in the surah, obviously, of course. Uh, and, and the, yeah, and the, the jihad is is the highest, the highest um, 
the highest rank in Islam because uh, uh, Rasul al Amr al Islam wa Amuduhu Salat wa Darwa to Sinamihi al Jihad. So uh, that's the um, Prophet uh, Hadith of Yusuf. Absolutely, so, absolutely. Yeah, so, okay, very simple. And, yeah. and, and Darwa to Sinamihi it means that the, the person who, who makes jihad, he is um, yes. putting his life absolutely. So in, 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 in the, for the sake of Allah. So absolutely. that is, life is the most precious thing. Yes. Uh, the uh, possessing uh, or the possessions um, is, is part of jihad, obviously. You need to uh, yeah. 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 So jihad yeah. with, with all our possession and, and uh, so uh, that, that is part yeah. our whole life, our whole life is a struggle. Whole life yes. is struggle to do what? To give Allah his right. Absolutely to give, right. To give Allah his right. And therefore, when we give Allah his right, we are writing ourselves as well. This is the best for us. And for this, we are happy to do everything and anything because nothing belongs to us anyway. Everything is for Allah. In Surah Tawbah, inshallah, we will see this. Yeah, that, Subhanallah, that, the, the, the jihad is, has come uh, to the front with al uh, Bayt al-Maqdis or uh, Al-Masjid al-Aqsa, yeah, you know, attack that. If you yeah. if you follow the the social media, there there are people really in millions in from the Muslim who are uh, you know prepared to go there and fight. Yes. For but for the we sake. have to be sensible. That's what we should say. People. No, absolutely, be... absolutely right. But but ah. uh, if if in ourselves we don't think about jihad, no, if we don't do it. Problem. That, but if they don't, if we don't think about it, this is a big problem. problem. So Alhamdulillah, that the Ummah is still yeah. people, you know, who think they yeah. they want to, to do jihad, but there are obviously obstacles. We know yeah. that. Yes, absolutely. Uh, and, and as you said, uh, there should be a, a sensible way of doing it. But yes, it, it just make you uh, feel proud that Alhamdulillah, there is a lot of Muslims uh, br uh, brothers who. Just want to, 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 to. You see to, the khair in every musibah, there's khair for the ummah. Alhamdulillah. Yes. Alhamdulillah. Yuriduna li yutfi unur Allah bi afwahim wallahum mutim nurihi. This is Allah Ta'ala's nur, it will prevail, inshallah. No doubt about it. Inshallah. 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 May Allah make us part of that. Ameen. 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 Khair, jazakum Allah khair. I leave it to Brother Usama now to decide what we do next, inshallah. Uh, if there's any other question, brothers and sisters, please feel free to unmute and ask Brother Masood directly. Is there anything else to ask? No? I think that's it. Then we'll conclude the session. Just like Murakhir Brother Masood. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah.